Welcome back to All States First and Ten with Sporting News College football writer Matt Hayes. I'm Stephen Levine in the Sporting News studio. And Matt, evidently somebody somewhere has been saying the SEC is overrated, that the Big Ten, Big 12, Pac-12 are catching up to the SEC. But if you look at the polls, the SEC still has six teams ranked in the top ten, including Texas A&M in their inaugural season with the conference, who beat the unbeatable Alabama. Is the SEC overrated? Steven, I realize I'm taking my life into my own hands here by saying this, considering the passion of the fans in the SEC. But let's look realistically how this all has worked out. If you're looking at the SEC, you got Alabama, you got LSU, you got Florida, you got Georgia, you got South Carolina, you got Texas A&M, all these teams in the top 10, top 12. You have to start looking at it more realistically. Alabama. Alabama beat LSU in a game they probably should have lost. Other than that, who has Alabama beaten? LSU won at Texas A&M. Nice win. Other than that, anyone? Florida probably has the best resume of the group because of the wins at Texas A&M, because of beating LSU at home and South Carolina home. Look at Georgia, Stephen. Georgia is two games away from playing for the national championship, and Georgia has played one game of significance that they won against Florida when the two teams combined for 11 turnovers. Georgia lost by 28 to South Carolina. And this is a team, Stephen, that if it beats Georgia Tech, and if it beats Alabama in the SEC championship game, we'll be playing for the BCS National Championship. I think at some point you've got to look and start saying the SEC has this reputation because it's the SEC, not because of the way the teams are playing on the field. Well, is there something about the requirements, the scheduling requirements within the conference that makes it, uh, that, that makes it a little bit safe for these teams because they don't have to necessarily go out and face some of these other powerhouses that are outside of the well, SEC? Well, they're going to tell you this. Okay, each SEC team has four non-conference games that they can deal with. They're going to tell you, look, we've got to play eight league games. We got to go through our meat grinder conference. We have to play each other. We have to knock each other off. And then while they're throwing that out there and they're hiding things under that one little shell, Stephen, is Alabama with the red ball under the shell. And guess what? Alabama, fortunately, hasn't had to play Florida this year, hasn't had to play Georgia this year. But Alabama beat LSU, so that's why they're in prime position to play for the national championship game. It's confounding at this point, to tell you the truth. Wow. All right. Well, let's talk about another team that looks like they're poised to play for the championship, and that's the Fighting Irish of Notre Dame. You know, since Lou Holtz left in 1996, there's been this coaching carousel. All the coaches lament, well, we can't recruit because the academic standards are just too tough. Well, now, Brian Kelly has them undefeated at this point of the season. Um, the same academic requirements he has to deal with that everybody else had to deal with. So are, is it possible that smart guys play football? <laughs> you know what? Never again, Stephen, do I want to hear any coach or any administrator talk about how they can't get elite players in school because they're not academically eligible. Notre Dame graduates more players than anyone year after year after year. They have the highest graduation rate. And now, lo and behold, there's Notre Dame, the number one ranked team in the country. Number one on the field, number one in the classroom. Hello, North Carolina. This is how it's done. You don't lower the bar and tell students, take no-show classes. You actually raise the bar and say, look, you can be better than anyone thinks you could be because you're smart. Unfortunately, that's not how it works right now at a majority of Division I schools. And Notre Dame's incoming class, I believe, is ranked third. Their recruiting class is ranked third in the country. It looks like they could maintain this, this sort of pace for a while. They could be in the conversation for the foreseeable future. The, the, you know, the, the interesting thing, Stephen, is that you know, Notre Dame is where they are right now at number one it, without the benefit of these great recruiting classes. So this is a great coaching job by Brian Kelly. It's a team that has found itself, that has great chemistry, and that is playing well right now. Okay, as we head into rivalry weekend, Ohio State and Michigan is one a lot of people are going to be looking at. Ohio State at this point is still undefeated. It looks like they could probably end the season undefeated. Again, another great coach coming into a program and maintaining a high level of quality. Yeah, I mean, there's no doubt what Urban Meyer's accomplished at Ohio State, it, it, it's unreal. I mean, I think people forget this was a seven-loss team last year, Stephen. It's a huge rivalry game, Stephen. And there's no doubt about that. It's probably one of the top two rivalries in all of college football. But it means even more this time around because Ohio State can win, finish unbeaten, and claim the AP National Championship 
if by some reason we've got two one-loss teams playing in the BCS National Championship. So now let's go to this. Look at Urban Meyer in rivalry games. He's unreal in rivalry games. You got a coach who at Bowling Green, at Utah, and at Florida prior to arriving to Ohio State, he's 13-3 and in games against the school's biggest rivals. At Bowling Green, he was 1-1 against Toledo. At Utah, he was 2-0 against BYU. At Florida, he was 5-1 against Florida State, 5-1 against Georgia. The guy knows how to get his teams ready for rivalry games. Ohio State's going to finish unbeaten, and there will be a lot of Ohio State fans, and you know who you are out there, Ohio State fans, that are going to be screaming the Buckeyes are the best team in the country. Well, we could put an asterisk right next to the, uh, the eventual BCS winner, can't we? We can. I mean, it... It, you know, I mean, it didn't work for Roger Maris, but we can, sure. <laughs> Did Roger Maris play for Ohio State? Now I'm really confused. <laughs> All right. For Matt Hayes, I'm Stephen Levine. This has been All States First and Ten. Thanks a lot for watching.